says, Amen. In this book, it's actually a great book, Are You My Mother? It's a story of a hatchling bird whose mother, thinking her egg will be safe, leaves it in the nest and flies off in search of food. While the mother bird is gone, her baby bird unexpectedly hatches. He does not understand where his mother is, so he goes on a long search to find his mom. As this chick lacks the ability to fly, he walks and is in search. He asks a kitten, a hen, a dog, a cow, and finally a snort, are you my mother? But none of them are. In our lesson for today, John asks a similar question. Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? John begins to wonder, as he wastes away in prison, that maybe Jesus is not the Messiah. Listen to our text. And John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to the Lord, saying, Are you the one who is to come? Or shall we look for another? Do you ever have uncertainty and doubt about Jesus? Do you ever wonder if Jesus is really who he says he is? Do you ever question something he said or did? Do you ever wonder if Jesus is really truly working on your behalf? If so, good thing you came here today because you're in good company. John the baptizer is right with you. Hopefully it's comforting to know that someone as great as John had doubts and fears and misunderstandings. But unlike John and how he handles his doubt, we unfortunately doubt and we stop reading our Bible when we doubt, we stop praying, we stop spending time being strengthened by fellow believers. But not our friend John. When he begins to doubt, when his faith begins to waver, he reaches out to Jesus for answers. You see, doubt flourishes in the darkness. It's kind of like a mushroom. It thrives on the cold, dark loneliness of the human spirit. In solitude, the questions seem larger. We become more hopeless. John, in our text, was in a dark cell where the mushrooms grow. And darkness feeds doubt. But John ultimately understands that light dispels the darkness. So when in doubt... Go to where the light is. Do not neglect time with God. Do not ignore your Bible. Do not forsake the fellowship of believers in Christ. When in doubt, get as much possible light as you can into your life. When in doubt, turn to Jesus. Now I want you to notice how Jesus responds to John. And we can be certain that Jesus will respond to us in the same way when we doubt. In our lesson for this morning, Jesus does not rebuke John. He doesn't reject John. And he doesn't write him off. Instead, he kindly, gently, patiently, and lovingly shows John once again who he really is. John confirms that Jesus truly is the Messiah. So when in doubt, turn your eyes to Jesus, and he will graciously give you sight. John doubted, but he went to the right place for answers. He went to Jesus, and Jesus gave sight to those who were blind and brought light to those in darkness. He gave to John the answers he needed to comfort the trouble of his soul. John really struggled 
Because at times it didn't always look like Jesus was doing anything to overpress the oppressors or help John while he rotted away in prison. And this didn't make sense to John. Jesus wasn't meeting his daily expectations. So John humbly asks, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? We face these same questions in our life, too, don't we? Why did someone I trust do me so wrong? Why does my spouse keep getting sick? Why is my family struggling so hard financially? Why can't I just catch a break? It seems like it's one thing on top of another. We go to the doctor for one thing, it gets better, and then something else crops up. Do you ever ask, where are you, God? Can't you see me struggling down here? I thought that when Jesus came, he was supposed to fix this and make all things new. That was John's question, and our, it's our question this morning. But we, like John, are reminded that it oftentimes doesn't happen like we would have it planned. So we look at life and we wonder too, are you the one or shall we look for another? But yet in the midst of our doubts, we trust that Jesus' plan is always the better plan, for he is the only hope we have to hold on to this Advent. <clears throat> Our only hope is found in the birth, life, death, and resurrection of the baby Jesus. That's where God comes to make our wrongs right. For there is no answer to our problem apart from Christ and his cross. For there the Son of God took on himself all our sins, and he suffered the wrath of God in our place. It begins with the forgiveness of sins, that forgiveness that is yours by grace for Christ's sake. So what is it for you? What is your prison? What sin is wrapping its tentacles around you? What troubles and worries are dragging you down like an anchor? What lies has Satan hissed into your ear, making you think you're not worthy, that you're too sinful, and that you'll never measure up? Don't listen. Jesus is the way. So now here's your one takeaway. Even in the midst of our doubts, Jesus does not change. Jesus is still the Messiah even when things don't seem to be going our way because we're still reminded that the blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, the poor have good news preached to them. And you today have the same good news preached to you. I can assure you that the good Lord will heal all your diseases, he will undo all your afflictions, And he will give you grace upon grace. You have the Lord's promise of this. Yes, there is your hope to hold on to today, even in the midst of your troubles and doubts. So you don't have to run around the world and ask, are you the one? Yes, he is the one. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you don't need to look for another In the holy name of Jesus, amen.